Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we begin with a bit of a problem. Now we ended the previous episode with a bit of a problem too and that was that we had potentially stranded Philippe on the surface of Mars but we have a somewhat bigger problem this time because I can't turn to Philippe's pod, Ares Pod G landed on Mars without it tipping over and generally exploding something. Now Ares Pod G if it explodes something on one side but not on the other side, that's a problem because then it's imbalanced and the Gemini lander engines that we used uh, on it uh, cannot gimbal. So, and the RCS is not powerful enough to compensate for any sort of severe chain, you know, uh, gap in the COM if it, the COM is off to one side. So, yeah, well, maybe this time when I turn to it, it won't be a problem. Uh, of course, I zipped up the save at the end of the previous episode so I can restore the persistent file at any time. So that's a good thing. And so basically that's what I've been doing. Uh, I've been turn turning to it. Uh, it explodes. And um, I restored the persistent file and try again or try something a little bit different. I tried uh, using Alt F12, uh, you know pause on vessel unpack unbreakable joints no crash damage um, no crash damage could be helpful I think um, yeah okay let's let let's hmm let's try it without those first and then I'll try it with them after all this is a glitch we're just compensating for a glitch and so I feel justified in using whatever cheats necessary to keep the thing intact and in the state it was at the end of the previous episode. Okay, uh, uh, so it automatically turns to like 90 degrees, which is not good. Did you see that? Uh, it, it seemed to load in the right direction and then it turned 90 degrees. It was like a flat 90 degrees. It wasn't even... It wasn't even fair at all. Um, well, and there we lose uh, two of our solar panels, as if we need more of a solar panel problem. Um, while it's here, I guess we can investigate certain possibilities. But I'll pro I'll be reloading. Actually, you know what? Um, maybe we should just get rid of the other landing legs. Those are pretty heavy. Um, but we'll have to do that in a sec. So, Philippe is a pilot and cannot... Uh, demolish things if we have him pop out and try and have him uh, get rid of this little stub for instance uh, that is not gonna work only engineers can do that we can use uh, ship manifest to dump our wastewater lithium hydroxide waste except sometimes it does that annoying sound glitch yeah now it has a permanent sound dang it Hold on, let me go back to Space Center and come back. Well, any hope that coming back to it from the Space Center, it would be the right side up, probably wouldn't matter anyway because we've lost the landing leg and it'd be really awkward. But, okay. So, let's see what we can do with this, but I'm definitely going to be reloading the, the persistent file. We've got hack gravity. I'm not going to have... Unbreakable joints. We'll do that on a different test. This is going to be a test of how we can break this properly. Uh, so we're going to use some of our fuel and try and knock those. I don't suppose there's any way we can like destroy the additional landing leg, is there? Probably not. Well, let's just do the basic thing and make sure we're turned in the right direction and tilt it up so let's retract the landing gear for a sec but yeah with missing one line you'll see exactly how it handles so again we have uh, we have hack gravity on okay so but this is basically how we want to launch And what we're going to do is we're going to push off and then re-establish gravity. Uh, 
um, on high gravity. Now we got a little bit of a benefit, but we also had to do a little bit of RCS work to get there, so. We're gonna say surface 80. We hold that. I don't know if Smart ASS is better than SAS at holding things right now. A lot of RCS is going to just compensating for the missing landing leg. Uh, now it's stopped. Uh, you know what? We could put some fuel in these tanks over here to compensate and lock it. That would be a good idea. Okay, so hold on a sec. Um, we're going to reload and we're going to try... Oh wait, maybe I could just do it right now. We've got some time to apoapsis. Oh, yeah. Lock that fuel. We're just gonna see how close we are to getting to orbit, but we're not gonna be that close. On the other hand, this was completely messed up. Yeah, next time we'll have to redistribute the fuel in the tanks a little bit earlier to compensate for, and then we won't have to use so much RCS to rebalance. But then again, uh, if we actually want to use this fuel eventually, which we do, we will have to we will have to unlock it, and then we're going to have a balance issue. Or we could just use RCS to do that part of the burn, but still, we're, we're going to have a balance issue. This particular orbital attempt was, of course, a little bit too steep. We also don't have any water. Though, this Kerbal can survive for a bit of time without water, so there is that. Okay, that's the end of what we have now. We've got an apoapsis outside of the atmosphere. The question is, how much delta V would we need to actually make orbit? 600. Well, that's close enough for now. So, how much if we unlock um, this fuel? 193. Now, the trajectory was sloppy, and if anything, we would really like to get rid of these landing struts, but again, uh, Philippe being a pilot cannot do that. I looked and I wanted to find out if I could give pilots the ability to do that. I looked at KES and KIS. Couldn't find any setting for that. It might be baked in. So we could give Philippe an honorary engineering degree? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to manage to uh, get Philippe into a situation where he can just rip those off. I think they would it would solve a lot of Delta V issues if we could take those off. Um, especially since the game is absolutely adamant about forcing me to use um, HackGrav to write this up again. We can probably explode the solar panels. It will diminish how much electric charge we have left, but Actually, the Kerbals can survive a little bit of time without electric charge as well. Same with the antenna. But, as you can see, I mean, I'll just uh, doubly verify. Let's get outside. Okay, and if I try and do disassemble part, no luck. I guess, well, no, I can't bring it into inventory either, because that also requires an engineer to use a drill to bring it into inventory, so that's not an option either. I mean, I guess we can shut down this engine. The center of mass... Uh, oh, wait. The center of mass is going to be further on this side because we've got a lack of stuff here. So if I shut down this engine, maybe it'll be balanced. There's a theory for you. Uh, that's five in a row and then one on this side. Let's see if that works. This is just uh, testing a theory. Uh, that didn't work at all. Okay, let's try that again. No. 
Okay, why are you guys not flame out no propellants? Um, I'm a bit confused. Okay, let's try and put them into this tank. Okay, but um, we'll sideline that issue for a bit and we will check out what happens when I do unbreakable joints and all of that business and see if at least the pod doesn't have any parts breaking off when we load. Whether that solves the problem or where it causes more problem because we actually want parts to go away, I don't know, but let's try it. All right, here we go again, and this time we are going to activate... I don't know if pause on vessel unpack makes any difference, but hey, why not? Mm, unbreakable joints, no crash damage. Let's see what this does. And turn to it. Okay, it popped up. Um, well, this unbreakable joints thing uh, still allowed three of our solo panels to die. Probably would have rather had the solo panels than the landing struts, though. So... That's not great. The solar panels are pretty heavy though. So we're still going to have to compensate for the mass. That one can go away. Um, and we're going to do that by uh, a little bit of fuel pumping. So we have more mass over there so this tank can go into this tank a little bit. Um, well, that's pretty fast. Let me do it this way. Uh, why is it randomly tossing about, huh? Okay, let's hope that that's enough. Now, well, that leaves us 3,470, but that's because we've locked some of the fuel. If we unlock that, let's see, 3,559. So let's just keep that in mind as we try and get rid of some of the excess stuff. Okay, thankfully no double sounds from it this time. Uh, should I try the food, water, and oxygen? The heaviest thing is the water. Uh, so maybe I'll dump half of that. Oh, darn, I did, that did not work out. And now it's stuck on that noise. Okay, let me come back to it. Okay, so no more annoying sound temporarily. Um, maybe we can get this upright and then turn on gravity since we have all of our landing legs. So we're going to... Let's keep these on just uh, while we're getting it upright. Unhack, uh, we've got uh, hack gravity on. We're going to turn on RCS thrusters trying to get us upright. Um, well, we need to retract the landing gear temporarily. Remember, hack gravity just turns it to one one hundredth of a G. It's not completely gone. We used some delta V to do that. Oh no! That one just popped out! Oh man. Okay, well, hold on. Let's stabilize. Well, that took a little bit of our delta V. That's not fair. We're sort of going in the wrong direction. Actually, it's a good point. Which way is the right direction? Uh, let's make sure we are going in the same direction as the light lander. Relative inclination, 20 degrees. So, it's really not at 90. I guess this is the way to go. Okay, but we don't want to go straight to the horizon just yet. Okay. Start burning. And unhack gravity. Okay. I suppose retracting the landing gear will help with drag. That seems to be a good enough angle to increase our time to apoapsis. 
we still need... Oh, let's pause there. We're still needing some RCS to hold ourselves. Oh, 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 we're going flippy. We're going flippy. No! Hold on. Uh, maybe I should use Smart ASS to help me out here. Can it? Just point pro grade. That's not. <laughs> Uh, that's not helping. Alright, that's not working very well for us. Hmm. I did not think that we would flip out. Oh, that's going to totally the wrong direction. The balance seems really weird right now. Yeah, and we're going down now. Let's just go straight up for a while, I guess. Uh, not backwards, though. Come on. It really doesn't want to go where I want it to go. I think there, it's still in the throes of aerodynamics here. Yeah, I think we've been caught by aerodynamics. It's like if we roll the right way, we'll be aimed the right way, but it's all about the roll. And we've lost a lot of fuel here again. I'm trying to push down on the stick as much as possible, but it won't pitch down right now. And now it wants to go retrograde again. Maybe a retrograde orbit is just easier. I don't know. Um, so... I guess that means it's heavier. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, well, this is obviously not going to work. Let me try one more time. Okay, here we go again. I really wonder whether it's not just better to have it knock off a few extra parts. It seems to knock off the solar panels anyway. I'd rather lose the landing legs. Especially since it doesn't seem like we can safely uh, get upright and turn on gravity again uh, because there's that one landing leg that decides to flip us anyway, right? Uh, if I extend the landing legs and we try and restore gravity for some reason, that landing leg glitches out and we flip around and we, we, we get launched up. So, I don't know. If, if we could settle it down properly, uh, it would be more legit to actually have high, gra uh, high gravity off and have it settle on the ground before we start launching, obviously. But I don't think that's going to be feasible. So, so yeah, I I'll just try and break as much stuff as possible, I think, is <laughs> counterintuitively probably the better way to go. We're, we're going to be using extra fuel to make sure that we're reoriented to an upright position anyway, so so we'll call it even at the end. We'll see. Uh, we'll, all, of course, have to also lock fuel to compensate for where the mass ends up, and I'm not entirely sure I'm doing that right. Uh, last time definitely seemed like we were out of balance, but all right, let's see. Okay, pop up. That's pretty high up this time. Uh, let's hope it doesn't... Oh. Yeah, I was sort of worried about that. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, well, we'll see what kind of state it's in this time. It's possible that we're going to have to just uh, start our way to orbit immediately on the hop, but I don't know if I'll be able to control it very well. 
Uh, that's pretty far. Uh, no, that's not gonna do very well. No, I can't write it in time. Oh. Alright, considering that the vehicle is being thrown up into the air to a height that will destroy the pod, I think I have to go with unbreakable joints and no crash damage. That will at least keep it safe until it hits the ground. I really don't have the ability to turn it using the RCS when it's mid-air and flipping around like that. Uh, the RCS is just not powerful enough to stop that kind of rotation. So, yeah, we don't really have much of a choice. Okay, it's up in the air. Um, let me, maybe I can retract, uh, oh, I can't, no, no, <laughs> I can't get that solar panel. Uh, I think they all broke off. That's good, I guess, because it's nice and even. On the other hand, I really would have liked the landing struts to break off instead, but with the unbreakable joints and no crash damage, that was unlikely to happen. Okay. Uh, well, let's do this thing, but I won't try and dump the water because that seems to cause the sound glitch. We are, I think, currently balanced, so we don't have to reweight the the fuel. On the other hand, it might be a good idea to pump all this fuel up for balance reasons, because uh, then we can ensure that our center mass and center lift are all right. Okay, and my drop side. Okay, well, that might be the best we can do there. All right, pumping the fuel up. So 3,600 is not going to be enough to make orbit, but I want to know exactly how far off we are, potentially, so that we can get a sense of what other possibilities might be useful. Is that, there's always that one landing leg that wants to stick out a little bit ahead and will cause problems if we allow it to. Okay, um, I don't need those. I'll hack gravity. RCS on. Okay, well, um, thing is, if I extend the landing legs, it's going to pop me up again. And if I turn on hack gra uh, turn off hack gravity with the landing legs in, we'll probably crash into the ground. I don't know if we can balance properly like this. So I will have to ignite first and then unhack gravity. So let's do it. Okay, I did that quickly enough so it shouldn't have been too big a deal. We are balanced this time, so it's nice. That is a relief. You can see very little RCS use this time. I'm just gonna go straight 90 to see if we can make orbit like this, rather than do anything fancy. I think we should flatten out a little bit faster, and to do that, I'm gonna throttle down actually. I don't want to deviate from prograde, that's not efficient, but we'll let uh, the prograde vector fall by throttling down. We haven't locked any tanks this time, so what we've got displayed is what we've got. Well, I'm just gonna go more horizontal now. Is it possible to get a more optimal trajectory? Yes, I think so. I'm gonna pump this fuel up just in case that helps with balance still. It may be that even at this altitude we've got a lot of drag so maybe I don't know if I should be steeper or not. I also don't know if we are carrying any extra mass because we've got the stub of the solar panel arrays here even though they're broken don't know if they still uh, apply the mass to the craft okay a little bit shy of uh, 
space as far as the apoapsis is concerned. We've got some time to apoapsis. That's deliberate because I want to see what the Kerbal's jetpack can provide. And right now, as far as reaching orbit is concerned, and actually there is more drag here than I thought there would be. So that's worth noting. Uh, we're about 400 shy. Okay, so let's have our Kerbal EVA and RCS and I think that's the right direction, yeah. Also, once the Kerbal's on EVA, it's a limited amount of time before the oxygen runs out, right? Though Delta V-wise, it's looking pretty darn good. I mean, not necessarily that we're going to make orbit this time, but it's sure got a lot more EV than I thought it would. Okay, that's it. Let's see what our situation is. If it even shows us our orbital situation. Oh, yes it does. There's Philippe Kerman. I boosted the apoapsis a little bit high. It's not really showing my periapsis, but actually it does allow me to make a maneuver. That is on this trajectory, yeah. Okay. Um, 140. We could toss Philippe really high, and then maybe the light lander can do a quick rendezvous. That'll take a lot of practice, though. That'll be one of those things where we're just going to have to rinse and repeat. Um, so that's approximately orbit, uh, 141 meters per second only. So basically the jetpack had close to 300, which is good to know. But this is not the way we're going to do it exactly. I really need to figure out how to strip just a little bit more mass off of the lander. Um, we got rid of all the solar panels, or maybe got rid of all the solar panels. Uh, but maybe we should just make sure that we can dump all but this amount of food, water, and oxygen, right? Because this is all he's going to be able to carry anyway. So we don't need the extra food, water, and oxygen that he can't carry with him in the EVA suit. So that's the thought. Anyway, so this is the problem. Basically, the, the first problem is uh, Philippe can't strip stuff off of the craft. Second, actually, is a part partway solution in that the, the game sure can break stuff. Uh, by flipping us and deciding not to load us properly. So exactly how we manage that situation will determine our ability to make orbit as well. But uh, so far this is uh, as close as I'm getting and I'll need to think up some additional solutions. So, but, you know, there's, there's hope. I mean, we're talking about 141 meters per second. Granted, after we do that, Philippe seems to have a, a day's worth of food, water, and oxygen. That's not bad, actually. You know, um, but electricity is only four and a half hours, okay? So watch out for that. But the light lander is in about a four-hour orbit. So uh, that's like six orbits. Now, we're not in the right inclination right now because I went straight out at uh, 90 degrees or actually a little bit above instead of matching the orbit of the light lander. So there's probably additional amount of delta V that's necessary to get into that inclination. But that's a side issue for now. Okay, so, yep, it was a little bit annoying. I was all ready to go to try and uh, figure out this situation, and then I found out about the loading problem, and that was disheartening. So anyway, but uh, here we are, and I'll give it some more thought and I'll restore the persistent file as it is, uh, as it was, and then I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.